You might wanna clap to this. You might wanna step to this. You might wanna live by this. Yes, it is, y'all. Oh, today. You might wanna clap to this. It's your day. You might wanna step. Welcome to Just Men, a life-changing program that resonates hope as well as encouragement. The program that gives you information and inspiration for the glory of God. I'm your host, Jeff Tate, and thank you for joining Just Men. On today's program, we have a very special guest. It's his first time being on Just Men. Please welcome Jonathan Orr. Jonathan, welcome to Just Men, brother. Thank you for having me, Jeff. Man, it's a tremendous pleasure for you to be on. I know we got a wealth of things to talk about. And yeah. before we dive in into this transitioning part of your career, let's talk a bit about your foundation in terms of your upbringing, where you're from, and tell us a little bit more about Jonathan Orr. Sure. Um, grew up in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, family of five, my mom, my dad, and two brothers. And I was in the middle, I'm the middle son. And so um, grew up, my grandfather was a pastor, my dad is a minister. And so uh, we grew up, they parents pretty much dragged us to church uh, every week, week in and week out. And so, um, and so just growing up, I, I had an idea who God was. Um, father and mother did a great example of, um, of, of just exemplifying um, you know what God looks like in a in in day-to-day -day life yeah. and so thank God for that but um, it wasn't until college and, and until I really began to know him for myself and uh, and decided to finally turn my life over to him and accept him uh, not only as Savior but as Lord and so um, but grew up playing sports that was what my brothers and I did um, pretty successful at it at an early age and uh, ended up getting a scholarship uh, to the University of Wisconsin, um, where I uh, played there for, for uh, four years. And um, after that, uh, went on to play in the NFL for a little bit. And so uh, that's it. in a nutshell, uh, I guess, a little bit about my foundation. So Yeah, wow, that's good. And I know that uh, as a PK, you know, we've had several uh -huh. men on our program, and they talk about uh, both the, the success of being a PK, also some of the challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, especially when you seem like there was an added pressure on the, the kids of a pastor uh, mm -hmm. to do well and to conform to the things of God. Can you, do you remember anything that was very transitional for you in that period growing up that uh, kind of helped you along the way? Um, you, that's one thing I can say about my, my, my parents. They never uh, really um, put us in a position where, where, where we felt like it was that added pressure. And so, um, so a, a lot of the pressure that I hear a lot of PKs talk about, um, I, I really can identify with that as far as the pressure to, to you know, be perfect or to always put the best foot forward. Um, we never really felt too much of that uh, growing up. And so uh, we were always kind of uh, free and, and, and had freedom to kind of, you know, be ourselves. And um, our parents knew we were going to make mistakes, and we made a bunch of them. And so, uh, so we just had that, that um, opportunity to grow in that way. And so, yeah, I yeah. think it's awesome that you talk about that period of not only knowing him as 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 your savior, but also as Lord. And what mm -hmm. does that mean? I know I hear that sometimes with people uh, in terms of, of understanding God in a more deeper way. What does that mean to you to know him as Lord? Uh, personally, uh, for me to know him as Lord means that um, I, I've given him my life. He has ownership of my life. Like. I'm not only saying, you know, I believe you died for my sins, which I, I do believe that, and, and that because I accept you as, as my Savior, now, you know, I have uh, eternal assurance. I'm saying that, but it's taking it a step further. Like, I trust you with my life, God, here and now. I, um, you know, your direction, your purpose, um, the things you have for me um, on this earth. Afterwards, I, I trust you with all of it. And so um, just really giving him um, ownership and access to, to my whole life. So. Uh, that, that's what it means to me as far as accepting them as Lord. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. And I know you're not going to talk about how you had to walk that walk, uh, especially <laughs> in, in terms of giving it all to Him when it came to your profession, when yeah. you begin to transform and, and change your direction for to mm -hmm. line up with purpose. I know purpose is a big part of, of your spirit and your yeah. heart, but before we move into that professional part of your life, talk a little bit about your family now, your current family, and what it is to be a, a father uh -huh. and a husband from that aspect. Man, I, I have a wonderful um, family, man. And it, it, my wife, she's incredible. Uh, we met in college. Um, uh, Haiti, 
what's up? I know you out there somewhere. I don't know what camera to look at, but what's <laughs> going on? But uh, that's 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 my sweetheart, man. She's an incredible woman of God. I know you hear that that term a lot, uh, you know, woman and man of God. But I mean, she she she, she walks it out, man. She she's a prayer warrior and and just um, wants what God has for her and, and for our family. And so and she she just she's just in love with Jesus. I guess that's the best thing I can mm. say about her. And and uh, I have two wonderful daughters. Um, my oldest is Carson. She's two years old. And our, our youngest is Catherine, and she's nine months. And so wow. uh, we just starting out. We got a long way to go. But mm. um, but uh, again, I just I, I thank God for my family, man. Um, just a blessing, you know. And, and I'm sure you can experience this. Uh, you've experienced this, Jeff. But just having a family, um, being in that position as a husband and, and as a father, you get to experience God, and you and you get to uh, it just gives you a new outlook on God and His relationship to. Uh, with us and and just how he views us and and just a whole different dynamic that you um, probably didn't get to experience you know before you were put in that position so yeah wow yeah, yeah I know my wife has uh, is the same as you has been a tremendous blessing in my life in uh -huh. terms of keeping me rooted and grounded yeah. in God and, and and you said something's very powerful and I'd like for you to speak on it very briefly yeah. is that you recognize your wife as a prayer warrior how significant is that to have a mate or a partner that intercedes and prays for you on your behalf, especially as men. Sometimes we put on these facades oh. like we got it together. Yeah, you know, yeah. we don't need this, we yeah. don't need that. Yeah. But deeply and privately, sometimes we yeah. show our weaknesses, and yeah. we need the prayers of that wife to continue in the season. So, talk about the significance of your wife in terms Man, of the prayer work. He gives you access to pray for your spouse like no nobody else can. And so, yeah. I, I really believe that. Man, it's been times. Um, just this past week. Uh, I was wasn't feeling too well. I had this little virus that's been going around, but um, you know, I, I woke up and I, you know, I was getting ready to ask my wife, you know, can we pray about this? And she had already been praying for me while I was asleep, mm -hmm. and so uh, you know, and that I felt better, you know, later on that day. But just and that's you know a, a, a small situation, but it, it's just man, extremely uh, significant. There's certain things that I don't see all the time. Sometimes pride might get in the way. Um, it's been situations where um, my wife was, she, she just, God gave her discernment in situations that I couldn't see because, you know, I'm, I'm looking at it through pride lens, but, you know, my wife was able to, to, um, to, you know, pray us out of certain situations or at least, you know, look past my pride and say, Jonathan, this is what God is saying concerning this. And so, um, but to answer your question, it's, it's, it's extremely significant to, wow. to have that uh, spouse uh, pray for you like that. Man, that's yep. beautiful. I know the word talks about one can put a thousand in a flight and two yeah. can put ten thousand in terms of angels and those protection and mm -hmm. and you're exactly right. I mean, I know my wife is constantly praying for me, especially when you're around temptation and don't even realize it. Mm -hmm. And how yeah. she's constantly she says, It's not that my trust is so much in you, but my trust is in the God is in you. And she's mm -hmm. constantly mm -hmm. having that spirit to be lifted up because she's not with me 24 seven. Right, right, you know, right. And right. what we're encountering. So uh, that's powerful. You know, I'm ready to go into this part about this profession because I think okay. uh, by laying this foundation, I think it really sets the tone of why you made the decisions that you make, especially when it lines up with purpose and it lines up with surrender. I think mm -hmm. one of the powerful things about giving your life and how in God operate as Lord of your life, as ruler of your life, mm -hmm. is surrender. And so talk a little bit about, you know, some of this experience when you first was drafted, you went in, you was playing with the Titans, and mm -hmm. just kind of you and I talked behind the scene a little bit about, but give us kind of a, a short view or a snippet of exactly mm -hmm. what you shared with me in terms of just uh, how God began to intervene in your mm -hmm. life and show himself as Lord and how you lined up with that spirit. Sure. Um, uh, this would be a snippet, like you said, but uh, I got drafted by the Tennessee Titans uh, back in 2006. And this was something I dreamed about playing professional football since I was a, a kid, so as far as I can remember. Matter of fact, when I got drafted, uh, I talked to one of my old childhood friends, and, sh and she said, Jonathan, guess what I found? I said, uh, what did you find? And she said, I found a picture that you had signed um, for me back when we were in the fourth grade. And she said, guess what it says on the back? I said, what? She said, it says, look for me in the NFL by 2006. Mm -hmm. And so ended up, uh, you know, reaching that goal. Um, and so after I had made it there, um, I don't know what exactly I was expecting. I, I don't know if, if I was expecting some sort of uh, 
satisfaction or, or contentment, um, but whatever it was I was expecting, um, it didn't happen. And so uh, I, I still felt a sense of um, uneasiness uh, my whole time there. And although I didn't play that long, um, it's, it's almost to say I knew I wasn't supposed to be there. But in my mind, I'm thinking, you know how long it took, took, it took for me to get here, all I had to go through, how many, all the blood, sweat, and tears I put into this. So I'm going to make the most of it. If Jerry Rice played 20 years, I'm going to at least <laughs> play 10. And so uh, <laughs> that was my mindset. And so. Um, Towards the end of my rookie season, um, God began to, to deal with my heart um, as far as telling me this isn't what I have for you. And I was kind of putting it on the back burner, kind of uh, just pushing them back. Like, I don't really want to hear that right now. Um, long story short, uh, in between my rookie and my, and my second season, I finished working out and um, was walking in the parking lot. And there's very few times that I can remember where God spoke to me in like that audible type of voice. But this was one of those times. And he said, Jonathan, what would you do if I told you to leave this all. And I said, st standing right in the parking lot, I said I would, not knowing that he would ask that of me um, less than a year later. And so fast forward some more, uh, he began to make it clear to me that I was supposed to move on, still wasn't trying to hear it. I went out to Oakland um, with the Oakland Raiders after I was with the Titans. Uh, knew I wasn't even supposed to be there, Jeff, but because they offered a contract, because it was good money, because this is what I thought, you know, uh, I deserved even, uh, went out there, uh, wasn't even out there a month, ended up getting injured, came back home. That was the first time in a while that I was able to really get before God or that I took the time to really be intentional about getting before God to see what it is he wanted me to do. He made it clear um, again that I was supposed to be moving on. After I got better, I was supposed to go out uh, to the New York Giants after they won the Super Bowl for a, a tryout. And that, um, I was supposed to go on a Thursday. And that Tuesday, uh, that's when I woke up and finally stopped wrestling with, with uh, what God was telling me to do. And I called my agent and, and, and told him to um, cancel that tryout with the New York Giants. And uh, that's kind of how I, um, you know, in a nutshell, that, that's, that's kind of how uh, that situation went. Yeah. yeah, wow, it's beautiful. I know that you and I talked behind the scene about how it birthed um, uh, other things in your life in mm -hmm. terms of misconception. I know you came out with a CD called The Album, mm -hmm. and you talked a little bit about this misconception and share a little bit in terms of what your album was about, what the album is about, okay. and uh, and how that relates to what you just shared about this experience and this transitioning going from you know the NFL and still not finding fulfillment and contentment, mm -hmm. and yet you know, surrendering yeah. to God, yeah. even though there's so much uncertainties uh, with life. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, um, you mentioned that the album is an acronym, a look beyond usual misconceptions. And it's basically a, attacking all of those uh, misconceptions, and misconceptions and those false ideas that society and that uh, our culture um, tells us is true, that, uh, you know, success is defined upon how much money you make or the status you get or uh, you know, how much you can accomplish. Um, uh, all of those lies as, 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 as far as, uh, you know, life is about just consuming all you can get, uh, you know, get as many degrees as you can get and then uh, make a lot of money so you can buy whatever you want or uh, whatever feels good to you. All of those misconceptions, um, the CD kind of uh, combated that with, well, what does God have to say about it? Mm -hmm. And so, man, I'm convinced, Jeff, that um, every single person, every single human being walking this earth that's ever walked this earth, that's walking this earth right now is born with two things. And one, they're born with a void that can only be filled by God through a relationship uh, with Jesus Christ. And then that's one thing. And the second thing, we're all born, born with a purpose and, and that can only be fulfilled through God. And so um, th therein lies true contentment and true happiness. And so that's kind of what the album is talking about. And, that, and that's kind of what... Uh, God has been challenging um, me to, to, to live up to uh, the last couple of years and what I'm um, constantly striving for, to, to live that life um, that, that God wants me to live, where, where he's truly uh, you know, being glorified and, and, and I'm doing the things that he wants me to do and I'm just being, we talked about this earlier, being the person mm -hmm. uh, he created me to be and finding contentment and joy in that wow. and satisfaction. Yeah, that's beautiful. I mean, it's powerful. I know, as you and I talked about behind the scene about 
uh, finding our identity in Him. Mm -hmm. uh, many times as men, we think our identity is wrapped up in our profession and in our possessions. Yeah. And uh, but deep down inside, we're still there's the void. And I like what you said, mm -hmm. man. That's so powerful mm -hmm. about finding your identity in Him, and we're made and shaped in the image and likeness of Him. 